The RMS Titanic was a British passenger liner that sank in the North Atlantic Ocean on April 15, 1912 after striking an iceberg. The incident took the lives of more than 1,500 of the estimated 2,224 passengers that were on board and went on to be the deadliest sinking of a single ship. This terrible incident has gone down in history for quite a few reasons, but today we are talking artifacts. What is up Top 10 fam, welcome back. I am your host today, Olivia Kozlowski, and today we are going to be covering the Top 10 terrifying things recovered from the Titanic. In our number 10 spot today we have musical instruments. Two parts of a destroyed clarinet as well as a violin that was played by bandmaster Wallace Hartley were found among the wreckage of the Titanic. I know musical instruments aren't exactly a terrifying discovery, but the discovery reminds us of the heartbreaking story of the Titanic's band. As the Titanic sank, it is famously known that the band played on despite the absolutely horrific incident that was taking place around them. At first it was widely believed that they did this because they were ordered to, and for the record, if this were the case, that still would have been insanely brave of them. But as it turns out, this is far from true. The band members were in fact not ship employees, which means that they had the same rights as any passengers to leave. So why didn't they? Well, it is now widely believed that it most likely was so that they could use their music to help calm people so that they wouldn't panic. That's some major bravery right there. In our number 9 spot today we have a men's shoe. This artifact is one of the rarest to be shown of the items that have been recovered from the Titanic wreckage because of the fact that it is in such poor condition. All that remains of the shoe are the welt, top cap, and just a touch of the insole. This artifact does a couple things. It reminds you of the very real humans who became victims of this tragedy, and it also reminds you of the unrelenting nature of the ocean. Seeing the personal belongings of the passengers, regardless of knowing who specifically the shoe belonged to in their story, just adds a personal element. Like you almost knew them. And then seeing how torn up the shoe has become is a strong reminder to us all that we truly are no match for mother nature and the ocean is one of the most powerful and frightening things on the earth. In our number 8 spot today we have a love letter. Richard Geddes was a cabin attendant on the Titanic who wrote a love letter to his wife while aboard but unfortunately she would never go on to receive it. The letter was written on the original Titanic stationery and it even had its original white star line envelope when it was found. While this story in itself is of course extremely sad and again one of those reminders of the human side of those who were in this incident, this letter also contained something else beside utterings and confessions of love. It also featured a description that Richard wrote for his wife of a near collision that the Titanic had with the SS City of New York, obviously prior to the terrible iceberg incident. There were people who had witnessed this near collision and believed that it was a bad omen for the Titanic. In our number 7 spot today we have a pocket watch. Okay. This artifact most certainly isn't the scariest one on today's list, but the story behind who it belonged to is one for the books. Sinai Cantor was 34 years old when he was a passenger on the Titanic. On board with him was his wife Miriam, and the pair were from Russia. They purchased second class passenger tickets, which at the time cost them £26, which is about $3,666 in today's money. When tragedy struck and the Titanic was sinking, Sinai immediately thought of his wife. He was able to get her aboard one of the life rafts thankfully, and as far as I know, she was rescued from the icy waters. Unfortunately, the same could not be said for him, however, as he ended up being one of those who passed away in the sinking of the ship. During rescue efforts, this pocket watch ended up being recovered from his body. In our number 6 spot today we have the inspection card. This inspection card once belonged to a woman named Marion Meanwell. What could possibly be worrisome about an inspection card? Well, it shows how Marion was not intended to be on the Titanic, but by some turn of events, she unfortunately found herself as one of the passengers. The card shows that she was originally meant to be traveling on a ship called the Majestic. For some reason, the trip she originally had planned was delayed and she instead was assigned to the ill-fated Titanic. You can see that the word Majestic was crossed out on her card which shows us the change in plans. If only people were able to see what was about to strike and could have warned her. In our number 5 spot today we have the Titanic radio. Okay. Don't yell at me. This is a piece of the ship that has not yet been recovered, but it's the focus of much debate on whether or not it should be retrieved from the wreckage. Known in 1912 as the Marconi Wireless Telegraph Machine, the radio on the Titanic sent distress calls to nearby ships that ended up saving the lives of 700 people in lifeboats. Despite how many people died in the Titanic tragedy, many of their bodies have never been recovered, which is why there were debates about whether
whether or not to retrieve the artifact because of the fact that there might still be remains located in the same area as the radio is. Lawyers have argued against the recovery of the radio because the dive plan did not include the prospect of there being human remains located down there. It also was argued because in order to retrieve it, they would need to cut into the ship's radio compartment, which was strongly opposed by preservation advocates. As of right now, it appears as though the dive to retrieve the radio will still occur, but it isn't exactly clear when. This radio would be a very valuable artifact, but it also would hold an eerie tale of exactly when and how the radio was used during the final moments of the Titanic. In our number four spot today, we have the telegraph. Separate from the radio we just talked about, the ship's telegraph machine was recovered in 1987, and this was used to relay commands to the engine room. So it was used as a communication device on board rather than to communicate with other ships. This telegraph machine is likely the one that was used to communicate to turn away from the iceberg in the North Atlantic Ocean. Unfortunately, these commands came way too late as the ship struck the iceberg only 37 seconds after it was finally seen, and we all know what happened next. This telegraph was actually part of a Titanic auction that featured over 5,000 recovered artifacts that were selling for a combined some $200 million. In our number three spot today, we have the bell. The bell from the crow's nest of the Titanic was recovered from the wreckage and returned to land where it now resides in the Titanic Museum. The eerie story behind this bell is that it would have been the one that was rung three times by the lookout, Frederick Fleet, in order to attempt to warn of the iceberg that was ahead. Frederick, as well as the other lookout who was with him, Reginald Lee, both ended up thankfully surviving the incident and went on to later explain what happened from their point of view. They explained that if they had been given binoculars to assist with their job, they could have seen the iceberg sooner. When asked how much sooner, Frederick replied, well, enough to get out of the way. In our number two spot today, we have the big piece. This was a 15 ton section of the Titanic that ended up being recovered from the ocean floor. The wreckage of the Titanic was not found until 1985 when oceanographer Robert Ballard was doing a secret underwater expedition. The big piece is about 26 by 12 feet and it was once a section of the ship's starboard side hull. This piece also has a part of the original support beam that attached this piece to the frame of the ship. It is said that where this piece was located on the ship, basically everything else around it was absolutely obliterated when the ship split in two. This artifact is said to be the reminder of the most violent aspect of the sinking of the ship, which is a horrifying thought. It was found among many other smaller pieces of the ship that had all been broken up. In our number one spot today, we have this cherub statue. In the remnants of the Titanic, they recovered a broken cherub statue that once found its home on the grand staircase of the Titanic. Aside from cherubs just being kind of creepy in general, there's something exceptionally eerie about this piece of religious iconography being at the center of such a huge disaster, as well as being found among the wreckage years later. Cherubs are usually known as bearers of the throne or creatures who attend to God, so it's just a little creepy to have one at the scene of a terrible disaster, as well as it making through all of the years and years that the Titanic was underwater waiting to be found. All right, guys, that has been our list for today. Thank you so much for checking it out. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed the video today, and don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more. I've been your host today, Olivia Kozlowski, and I'll see you next time. Bye.